This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, nurses go on strike after talks of pay collapses. Over 4,000 motorbike enthusiasts turn up for the final brass monkey gathering. And dozens of overseas dignitaries call into Dunedin for a two-day tour. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Nurses and associated healthcare workers began a 24-hour strike around New Zealand with marches in many cities. Across the south, thousands took to the streets, including in Queenstown, Dunedin and Invercargill. New Zealand Nurses Organisation members walked off the job at 11am after talks to settle their collective wage agreement collapsed. NZNO Nationwide Industrial Services Coordinator Glenda Alexander says many thousands of people took to the streets across the nation. Oh look it's just the same, it's massive everywhere, you know obviously the bigger cities, more people, um, smaller cities there's still a big presence out there, a wave of purple across the country. Nurses and associated workers are after a 17% pay rise. But Alexander says their working conditions are every bit as important, if not more so. Two frontline healthcare assistants at the Needham Public Hospital say assaults on staff have increased in recent years, and it's partially due to understaffing. Patient safety, staff safety are the two big issues, to be honest with you. And working overseas is a huge draw card, huge draw card for an awful lot of people. Because it's just diabolical, you know. A lot needs to change. It's not just about the money, it's about safer staffing and this many people putting their hands up to say, you know, help us out, listen to us. Career ED nurse Anne Daniels is very direct when she describes having to make decisions about who gets treated in the emergency department and who doesn't. We can't give them the care that they deserve. We're always deciding who misses out. Do you know how that feels? DPH Ward 7 nurse and songwriter Jack Ringhand took on the task of composing a protest song for the event. There's power, worker power in the union. It was the first time that I played it in public. Um, the response seemed great. At Invercargill, between 50 and 100 people marched in support of nurses. Southland Hospital Clinical Nurse Specialist Charlene Waddell and NZNO organiser Colette Wright say staff are at the end of their rope. And the nurses on the floor are we really wondering where their backup, where their supports are going to come from uh, because the problem's already pretty huge. And, and also retention and increasing for our staff, so ensuring for our new students coming through that we want to retain our students instead of losing them to Australia. While over in Queenstown, around 25 people marched from Lakes District Hospital to the busy Franklin Roundabout about noon. 15-year career nurse Jeanette Anderson says she's not had a pay rise for about four years. And all we want is fair pay and safe staffing so that we can do our job. It's estimated around 30,000 people took part in protests nationwide. The South Today. The man was taken into custody after driving his car through the front doors of the Otgen Night and Day store in Dunedin this morning. Police say the vehicle crashed into the entrance of the 24-hour convenience store on Princess Street at about quarter to two this morning. It's not yet known if it was an accident or a smash and grab attempt. Police say inquiries are ongoing into the circumstances of the collision. Organisers say a record-breaking number of motorcyclists took part in the 40th and final Brass Monkey Motorcycle Rally. It's estimated up to 4,500 people turned up to the event. Motorcyclists gathering for the last time at the annual Brass Monkey Rally. Organisers believe more than 4,000 people turned up to the event. And that's the biggest that we've ever had in 40 years. But it's the same old thing when you tell people that it's the last of something. Um, they'll make the effort to come 
And with COVID last year, people didn't go anywhere. People have bought new motorbikes and they spent their money in New Zealand, traveling around New Zealand. And that's what people have been telling us as well. The regular ride takes its name from the historically low temperatures at the regular meeting place. Spokesman John Williams says, despite the unseasonably warm temperatures, bikers came well prepared from across New Zealand. Just experience, you know, being here, catching up with friends they haven't seen, in this case, for two years. And that's why this is such an event as well. You know, people are coming with backup vehicles, bringing all their gear and barbecues and tents and stuff and that, you know. So you think, yeah, just make it work and let, let you go with it. With it being the last event of its kind for riders, there were many tall tales told of the journeys to the Ida Valley. Many riders taking days to travel there. And they also shared stories from the rallies of old. And Williams says that's what it's all about. So I actually asked quite a few people yesterday and today, why do you keep coming back here? And they said, look around. What's there not to like about here? The roads are great. And they said, you guys, the organisers are great, you're friendly, try and make things work. You know, you, you can't satisfy everybody. You try and satisfy most of the people here. With this being the last of its kind, there are rumours flying around of another event set to take its place, possibly at a different time of the year. In central Otago, the south today. Otago philanthropist Sir Egon Edgar has pledged half a million dollars towards a new high-tech interactive National Sports Hall of Fame in Dunedin. The Sports Hall of Fame has been at the railway station for 23 years, but a consultant says the current hall is not financially sustainable. Sir Eon changed his will this week to include his pledge to the new hall. For it to take effect, the facility would have to move to the Edgar Centre and or sports venue. He wants the new Hall of Fame to be a world-class attraction with computer graphics supplied by Dunedin entrepreneur Sir Ian Taylor. Overseas dignitaries representing more than 30 countries have been taking a two-day tour of Dunedin this week. The trip was put on by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and is intended to help the ambassadors learn of business techniques and potential opportunities in the South. Ambassadors and High Commissioners from 31 different countries visited the Otako Marae as part of their two-day study tour of Dunedin's economy. Minister of Foreign Affairs Protocol Advisor Fiona Fowler says the tour gives the dignitaries a chance to learn how we do things and also a look at potential opportunities for international business. I think it's very important um, for them to see different parts of our country, uh, different ways we do things, but also the different business opportunities. Fijian High Commissioner Philomoni Wangabaga says getting insights into how to deal with Fiji's beleaguered tourism industry is important to him. As you may be aware that our nations in the Pacific have been ravaged during this COVID and there's need for some innovative uh, thinking, business thinking. Uh, we hope that uh, we will get some uh, uh, take backs from, uh, from visiting these uh, places, uh, which also includes some startup uh, businesses and uh, technology uh, uh, businesses, agriculture sectors. So we hope that uh, some new ideas that we can gain from visiting uh, these institutions. Fowler says the country's closed borders has meant that diplomats are more available than usual to tour New Zealand. We try and do a study tour once a year um, and take the diplomatic corps to different regions of the country and showcase different businesses. Uh, at the moment, because of COVID, uh, we're trying to do it twice a year because we kind of have a captive audience at the moment. Yeah. Today, the group was to meet up with various local businesses at the Otago Business School. In Dunedin, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, a former Dunedin artist brings an environmentally aware installation to the South. We'll see you after the break.
A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got moleskins. We've got every sort of shirt. Worn ones, work ones, business, merino knitwear, jeans, trousers, you name it. The list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear. It fits. Alex Campbell Menswear. Pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Welcome back. School children crossing Christchurch's busy Cranford Street are a little safer during rush hour thanks to school patroller Lee Jewell. She says motorists regularly run red lights at the intersections she patrols, putting children's lives at risk. They run the red lights in Westford, so here. Cutting round, cutting round. And these kids walking across. It's very dangerous here on the corner uh, because of the red lights, and people want to get there as fast as possible, so they go through the red lights as many times as they can. I see them, they play on their phones, they have breakfast, they put on makeup. Obviously, the children would get hit. Morning's worse because everybody's in a hurry to get to work. So they all go through the red lights. Every day, all the time. An Auckland based former Dunedin artist has come south bringing a work to the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Steve Carr is bringing an environmentally aware installation down south, working with a local florist. Artist Steve Carr and a team from Dunedin's Estelle Flowers are putting together the Dunedin version of Carr's work In Bloom, which has been installed around New Zealand in different forms. From the residency this work got shown at, um, in Britomart for during the, the summer season and then the work travelled to Christchurch Art Gallery for autumn and now it's here for the winter season um, at Dunedin Public Art Gallery. Carr was one of the founders of the Blue Oyster Art Gallery in Dunedin a couple of decades ago before leaving to work on his masters in Auckland. He says the main body of the work may look like ordinary car tyres but he says they're definitely not. There's a chance that people walk by and and just assume that it's rubber tyres with plantings in it. And I quite like that part. I like that some people will discover it and some people may not. And and I think when the plantings are in it, that, that kind of slippage happens even more because you're drawn to the, the plantings. And we are, we're used to seeing 
planters, tyres with plantings in it, and, and so this feels like an extravagant kind of embellishment of that. In Bloom is different in each centre, reflecting the different seasons and local environment. As Dunedin slides into winter, the recyclable or natural part of the work has been supplied by Estelle Flowers. Jolene Wilkinson is pleased to be collaborating with Steve Carr. He gives us free reign. He's amazing actually because he's the artist but he's quite happy for us to do our thing. Wilkinson says in a juxtaposition to the non-biodegradable nature of the tyre sculpture, all of the plant matter is environmentally friendly. So with the exception of the Spanish moss, which is fully sustainable, but it has come from Auckland because it is a epiphyte, so it grows off other things. We don't have that kind of tropical thing in Dunedin as far as I'm aware. So other than that, everything else is sourced from our very local environment, Dunedin, our, our home gardens, um, local contacts. She says all of the floral components of the work will be composted at the end of the installation. In Bloom is on display on the mezzanine of the Dunedin Public Art Gallery. In Dunedin, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, a giant skateboard is touring the country, making a stop in the South, and we check out the weather. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. We've opened another pop-up store in Invercargill. It's for a limited time. We're in D Street, 201, right beside the Lone Star. Come and check us out. We've got some fantastic deals for you. We've got mole skins. We've got every sort of shirt. Worn ones, work ones, business, merino knitwear, jeans, trousers, you name it. The list goes on. It's such a big deal. Come and see us. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Alex Campbell Menswear. Pop-up store, D Street, Invercargill. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. Welcome back. A new report says the University of Otago contributes more than one billion dollars to the Dunedin economy. The university's contribution to the local gross domestic product has increased from 12 per cent recorded several years ago to 16 per cent. The Dunedin campus adds almost 800 million dollars to the city. Students contribute more than 200 million dollars. The number of jobs at the university are equivalent to over 5,000 full-time positions, which is 8% of Dunedin's workforce. The report says the university is easily the biggest single employer in Dunedin. 
a giant skateboard touring the country, trundled in for a visit to a school in Invercargill recently. Pupils of Sacred Heart School were invited to climb underneath and on top of the huge 12 metre long board, which is promoting the upcoming Olympic Games. What is possibly the world's biggest fully functional skateboard rolled into Invercargill as part of a nationwide promotional tour celebrating the addition of skateboarding to this year's Olympic Games. It's great that it's finally been recognised as an actual sport and a, and a technical sport at that. Two of the country's top skateboarders, Matthew Markland and Bowman Hansen, invited children from Sacred Heart School for a close-up inspection of the 12 metre long board, with Hansen saying the sport can open doors around the world. I've made a lot of lifetime friends through it and um, experienced things that I never would have without it. And pupils were able to get their own skateboards personally autographed by the visiting athletes. Uh, my skateboard, um, the skaters signed it and they wrote stuff and everything. Tour organiser James Delaney says skateboarding is one way of getting youngsters out of the house and physically active. Um, I think it's really important message to say that the uh, Olympics is an amazing thing, sports is an amazing thing. Trying to get kids involved in this day is extremely good, you know, when we're challenged with that of technology, but I think this showcases that there's still a love and interest for it. Other new sports added to this year's Olympics are surfing, sport climbing, karate, baseball and softball. In Invercargill, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Nurses went on strike after talks of pay and working conditions collapsing. More than 4,000 motorbike enthusiasts turned up for the final brass monkey gathering. And dozens of overseas dignitaries called into Dunedin for a two-day tour. Now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ADT. Welcome Craig. Good evening. Good Busy evening. day and lots happening. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a, a review from an independent inquiry into the medical, medical school at Otago University and this was where 50 future doctors um, from the school holidayed overseas instead of uh, completing their placements which they were expected to do. Um, so that, yeah, there was some serious concerns about that, caused a bit of an outrage at the time and an independent uh, authority was asked to investigate. They've, they've released their review today and quite scathing in the medical school, uh, saying that there were systemic problems at the school and issues that needed to be addressed. Um, I guess the biggest problem was that these students were getting um, government funding for their final year of study as well, so a lot of it wasn't going towards study. Um, and But while these guys have also been singled out, there were also claims in the review that this has been going on for several years um, and has been allowed to go on as well. So, uh, yeah, lots of questions being asked and it'll be interesting to see what the university does in response to that. Uh, we've got plenty of coverage on the nurses' strike as well, of course, from uh, Queenstown and Vicargill and Dunedin today. Uh, we've spoken to a few and they've said uh, they're hoping to get back to the table shortly to, to have more negotiations. But if they're not successful, they will be looking to up the ante a bit on their... On their their action um, and the biggest concern of course is that nurses will be looking to go over, overseas to Australia if they can't get better pay and, and work conditions and that would be a huge loss for us. Uh, also the Climate Change Commission has released its final report today for the government um, laying out its roadmap for the country to slash emissions and become carbon neutral by 2050 so uh, there's lots in it, a big report and lots of um, not good news if you drive a big four wheel drive and like eating lots of steak but um, so there are lots of targets with uh, introduce, introducing electric vehicles and uh, reducing livestock on farms and new native forests as well so it's going to cause a lot of debate uh, I guess the challenge will be to get these things through by 2050. And just finally with sport, the Highlanders uh, caused a big game on against the Brumbies on Friday and I had a last ditch attempt to make the final of the Super Rugby comp. Uh, team name today and Aaron Smith, no surprises, he's back to lead the side. He's pretty excited about it and said it, it is like a, a test match atmosphere going to this game because there is so much hanging on it. The key will be to win first and worry about bonus points later so we will see what happens and we wish them all the best. Nice, alright, thank you Craig. Now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with the Southern View, today's nurses protest. Looking at the situation, 
The weakest of weak fronts will bring a brief period of southwesterlies and showers tomorrow. Ahead of a spell of fine weather through the weekend, while high pressure dominates over southern New Zealand. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, partial cloud with 16 degrees in Greymouth and Westport. To the northeast, partial cloud here as well with 17 degrees in Nelson and 18 in Blenheim. Canterbury, partial cloud here as well with 15 degrees for Kaikoura, Christchurch and Ashburton. Heading to the southern towns, moderate southwesterlies, brief showers and 10 degrees for the Catlins, Belclutha, Lumsden and Gore. To the Central Lakes area, light winds and fine conditions for most areas with 11 degrees in Wanaka and Alexandra and 10 in Queenstown. Tiano can expect moderate southwesterlies, brief showers and 10 degrees. To the northern towns, light winds and some cloud on the coast with 13 degrees in Timaru and Oamaru. Land, light winds, fine conditions, and 12 degrees for Twizel and Omarama. In Dunedin, cloudy tonight with a low of 7, overcast tomorrow, and a chance of brief light showers around the middle of the day as winds tend southwesterly, a high of 13 and a low of 2. Cloud clearing tomorrow night and becoming fine and sunny on Friday with light variable winds. High of 13 and a low of 1. And in Invercargill, cloudy tonight with westerly winds and a low of 7. A period of cloud and showers tomorrow morning with southwesterlies freshening but becoming fine during the afternoon and winds decreasing. Frosty tomorrow night, a high of 10 and a low of 0. Fine and sunny with light winds on Friday. Cool with frost at night, a high of 13 and a low of zero. And that's all for our news this Wednesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Kakite Noa. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.